Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. It is six o'clock, and as such, I am calling the annual district meeting of the Wyndham Northeast Union Elementary School District to order. On our agenda tonight, I'm, I'm filling in for our moderator, uh, Fletcher Proctor. I'm the chair of the WNUESD, and in that capacity, I'm going to do a couple things. We're gonna walk you through the agenda, walk you through the articles that are going to be voted by Australian ballot on March 2nd. Um, we'll spend a minute or two on the budget because that's the item that's usually of the most interest. And then I'll take questions. I want to give a shout out to the folks at Fact TV because I think for most people that will be the means by which they'll see this tonight. And um, so tell your friends, tell your friends, friends, tell people you don't like that much to watch Fact TV either online or on the television and they can hear this uh, report to the voters of the three towns of Grafton, Athens and Westminster. I don't believe there are any adjustments to the agenda, the, but we will take on number three, communications and public comments. Uh, are there any, is there anyone that would like to comment? I see David Clark's hand. I can't see everybody else's and I'm gonna have Chris Pratt tell me when there are other folks um, asking to comment. So uh, why don't you go ahead and Kathy Siano also has a comment. So why don't we start with David? Okay, it's just sort of a point of order, <clears throat> excuse me, point of order, Jack. Um, it does say special meeting of the board but if this is an annual informational meeting, then I presume that there's no quorum required. That is correct. Don't, don't see a quorum of your board. And that's all I wanted to. Right. And, and, and I've told a couple of people who, who had to uh, cancel at the last moment that a quorum wasn't necessary. It's always appreciated when people are from my board are there, if only to roll their eyes when I'm talking. So it's all good. Um, I saw another hand. I think it was Kathy Siano. Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, the reason I uh, emailed you, Jack, was it's really important for the Grafton board, our select board, and um, that we know when meetings are happening and to get the information. And my one of my concerns is um, going on to the future, will there be a discussion with staff at Grafton and the parents of Grafton and Athens students, along with our school committee on the board, on the select board. Um, um, yes. Let me just say that this was suboptimal to say the least. And it is my anticipated policy, warning from one's car crashes, that uh, part and parcel of the annual meeting warning going forward will have as a notice not only that the meeting will be held, say via Zoom or whatever, but the time and date of the informational meeting we posted. And if I have anything to say about it, a Zoom link will be posted so that people will know well in advance. I also, we, we've talked a little bit in the last day or so about building a master calendar so that um, staff, both at the uh, SU and uh, board members themselves, including the chair, remembers to make sure that uh, notices go out and they go out in a timely manner and they go out to each set of constituencies in addition to just having it listed on the uh, website because I think we want to push out information to people. We don't want them to have to go figure out in which file the uh, notifications are listed. I think we've all done a little learning the hard way on that. Well, it just happened yesterday. I was subbing at Grafton and was asking Mary Beth, um, when's, when are the when are they going to have meetings? And she handed me um, your note of there was a meeting happening today. And I was yeah. really, I was really disappointed that 
our school committee on the select board would have given have given um, the notice from you. The original plan was to make sure that you all had them. We, because there was a scheduling car crash, we ended up having to move dates. And then we thought we were going to try to get it in this weekend as part of the uh, Westminster uh, pre-town. And then it turned out there wasn't a Westminster pre-town. And it was, it, was not a, it was not our finest moment to be absolutely blunt about it. And it wasn't my finest moment. And this will not happen again. Well, thank you for that. I know it's hard times right now. Well, we're, we're doing a lot of learning. I do hope that going forward, um, it is my expectation that the electronic part of meetings is going to be a permanent part of our process. I've, obviously, we're going to have in-person meetings too, but I think that we've all found it's easy to log on. We usually get a bigger uh, audience when people can just simply click a button and we want to accommodate that and we want to make it easy for people. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions, uh, comments, queries, jokes? I don't see any hands raised or anything, Jack. All right. So uh, being uh, the, appointing myself moderator pro tem for this evening, um, I want to walk through the articles as said, and we'll spend a few minutes on budget and then, um, and then we'll ask any questions about the either the budget or frankly anything else because that's part of the process. So Article One. Well, first of all, as you all know, Australian ballots are how we're proceeding this year, and those ballots have to be cast uh, by the end of day, March uh, seven p.m. March second. Uh, at this point, if you don't have a ballot, you should get one because most places sent them out early. And if you still haven't mailed it in, you probably want to drop it off because um, the post office is not what it used to be. So with that said, Article 1, to elect by ballot the following officers of the district from among its qualified voters. These are one-year ter terms. A moderator normally runs this meeting. Uh, the clerk manages the records and the treasurer actually does more than that. The treasurer is also the treasurer of the district and is engaged with um, certain financial transactions and uh, signing agreements that bind the district uh, to pay money or receive money. That's what the article, that's what article one does. Article two. Probably the one most people will want to know about, and that's shall the voters of the Wyndham Northeast Union Elementary School District appropriate the sum of six million nine hundred and fifty-four thousand six hundred eighty-four dollars, uh, which is the amount that the board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing year. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending uh, to be estimated to be $18,533 per equalized pupil. And that's under the state's formula for calculating this figure. And I must tell you, it's also the state's current estimate of this figure. We have found to our chagrin that their estimates can change uh, every 20 minutes. But that's what we're working with. and. Uh, that's a projected spending uh, change that is 1.07% 1, 1 less than last year. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Article three, and this is important for people that didn't participate last year, to elect the following members of the school board from the district, so from their qualified voters and the way this system works is we reserve, these are at large seats, but the persons that hold those seats are reserved. All members of the district vote on these folks, but there is a reserved seat for a resident of Athens. There is a reserved seat for a resident of Westminster. There is a reserved seat for a resident of Grafton. And again, next year you'll vote for 
uh, three other folks, each for two year terms and so on and so forth. Obviously, if uh, Westminster goes its own way, we'll make some adjustments to this, but that is the formula that was imposed on us as part of the so-called Articles of Agreement. And so you need to know that. Article four, and this it was, it shall the Window Northeast Union Elementary School District vote to pay its district officers compensation as directed by the board. We did this because we were still working out whether or not it would be the $400 that uh, Grafton had typically done or, or the somewhat north of that amount that the uh, folks in Westminster used to use as their compensation. People will remember that last year, we decided that as part of a cost savings to defer, um, defer any payment to any board, any board member, and uh, candidly, if you vote no, that'll stay the same. So that's that's the those are the articles. So why don't we move on to where this all lands us? Of, if there are questions about any non-budget items, this would be a time to ask them, and we'll try to stumble through an answer for you. Are there any questions anybody has about? what I've read so far. Anybody get help with my laryngitis? All right, um, <laughs> moving on. Let's talk about the budget because the budget's the stuff that people tend to care about. Now, obviously a lot's been going on this year. We have had a pandemic. You may have heard about that. We've had, uh, we've had a variety of issues around uh, dealing with the finance office that we think we've actually cleared up at the SU. It resulted in some fairly funky estimates over prior years, particularly affected the high school last year. Our estimates were pretty good. And we believe, actually we're quite confident that they're very good this year. Uh, but that's been an issue. We had a lawsuit brought to us um, by a free market advocacy group that has been uh, pushed off to our lawyers and we don't think will affect us at all. We've, um, we we're still working out uh, our, our negotiation issues with uh, the union. There are a number of things up in the air. We've also undergone uh, to Chris Pratt's credit and to Andy Haas's credit, a fairly thorough re review of the special ed part of our service offerings. And in many parts of the district, it's resulted in some significant uh, savings. Um, you'll see that that's not completely the case in our district's situation, but um, that's happened. Uh, Chris Pratt has also made a number of economies in the central office, and those are significant for us. And um, these are the things that are moving our budget the way it is. We are also, of course, dealing with the fact that um, um, we have a declining enrollment in Grafton, a fairly steady enrollment at Westminster, and that's this, those are the structural things that are affecting our our numbers. So let's let's get to the actual dollars. The bottom line is to be blunt, a mixed bag. We're going to be again. We're going to be asking people to approve uh, a budget of six million nine hundred fifty-four thousand six hundred eighty-four dollars to run our schools. That, thank you, Chris. You're on it for me. He's going through all the numbers. Here we go. This is the so-called three-year AOE estimate sheet. Now, I want you to know that this includes the pre-K program and it includes the kids we tuition for grades seven through eight. Now, you heard that the estimated impact is actually a percentage or so less than prior year, but it's actually in terms of raw dollars, about $150,000 more than it costs us to run the school last year, 
but it still is five per, $5,000 less than it was the year before. So that's, that's important. The bottom line impact for those of us, for those of you curious about how this would look if Westminster was a separate district, we believe in four, I think was on this and can correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be a, the Westminster on its own would have a budget in the neighborhood of $5,187,960, excuse me, $5,187,960. Athens would have, a, and Grafton together would have a budget of 1,766,724. $1, now, that's the bottom line. Um, the tax, the equalized pupil and the anticipated tax rates are listed on the sheet you see in front of you. I'm not sold that those are the final numbers at all, but if they are, uh, they would show that again, a nominal decrease from two years ago, a semi-nominal increase from last year, um, we'll have to see. As I said, we, uh, I want you to know that Flora and I have harassed the folks at the AOE about these numbers because they are significantly different than numbers we've seen in prior years. And I'm not really sure I believe any of them, but I think, but this is what the state says these numbers are. Um, you'll note we are below the threshold and continue to be, we're not below it by a whole lot, but we are, and uh, that's where we're at. Uh, David Clark will tell you that um, as part of a different study for something called the Act 173 group, we did uh, some research about how small and poor schools are doing financially uh, relative to more urban ones in uh, Chittenden County and uh, in the Middlebury area. And the reality is that if you're poor, you're spending about $2,000 more per equalized pupil than you are if you're not. That's just the bottom line. Just because there are special ed clusters that tend to form in more rural and in poor communities, it's because of simply the variation year to year is such that um, it's hard to account for, for what you need. And the fact is that you pay the teacher in in um, Grafton or in Westminster, the same amount that you pay a teacher in Burlington. And it's not our fault if there are 14 kids in that class as opposed to 26 in Burlington. There's just, you know, you can't, you can't make third grade disappear for a year just because it costs more per student. Those are the realities that we deal with. I'm, I wish there was a better way of dealing with it, but there really isn't. If you're going to have local education and not ship kids of uh, 40 minutes or more that are six years old, this is what you do. Students have a right to local education convenient to them and their parents. And that means that there's a rural penalty when you have less students to allocate those costs. That means that the states pays you less because they pay you effectively by the pupil and they don't pay you to run a school. So the, this is what we're dealing with. And um, candidly, there are, no, there are no significant increases and there's certainly no increases in staff. Uh, we made a bunch of cuts last year, some of which were kind of painful, particularly in Westminster. And uh, we've managed a fairly stable situation since then. And I feel that this is a pretty responsible budget. Um, when Melissa's here, if they want to disagree with me, this is their time to shine. And apparently not. <laughs> so we'll take questions at this point. Oh, well, Jesse, you're here too. I'm sorry. Jack, would you like people just to speak up or raise their hand? Hey, why don't you just speak up? Because I don't think there are that many um, participants. I will, I will say that if you and anybody watching on Fact TV has a question, and you might, 
um, got to get them in soon, but you can just send them to uh, either chris.pratt at wnesu.com or jack.briar at wnesu.com. I'm Chris is off this weekend, but I'm 24 seven and I will get back to you within a few hours, I promise. So that's what I would say to anyone. I've been answering a lot of individual questions. Charlie, you've got your hand up, go ahead. Uh, just a quick one, uh, where can we see the full text of the budget document, line by line? Um, Charlie, in the note that I sent out today, which you were a recipient of, yeah. it, had, it has the link to that document in its entirety. Right, so we can see the actual school budget line by line? Line by line by line. Yeah, I, just, I, I followed the link and I must have missed it. Okay, good. Not Thank a you. problem. Well, I gotta tell you that so, again, the line by line, yeah, there it is in all its digital glory. The, um, what I would tell you though, and it's really important because oftentimes people think that this line item is something that um, obligates us to spend, you know, um, uh, $70,582 uh, $70, on health services for whatever that figure was uh, that Chris just passed. The reality is we have a bottom line budget. What you're seeing here is how the sausage was put together but that may be that we will, in the course of the year, have to spend more on some light item and less on a different one. But this is the level of granularity we use in order to construct these budgets. It's, um, it can be a little numbing at points, but uh, that's, what, that's what we spend the time on. Um, just a follow-up question. I was speaking to a neighbor the other day who said he hadn't seen the school budget. Where do you find it? So where are the voters of these towns going to find this budget to, to examine it if they want to? Um, good question. I, what I would hope in future years, we're going to have this on the front page. We don't have it on the front page this year. It, but if you go to the WNUESD board page, you'll see it, you know, in highlighted Click this and there it'll be. You say that's there right now or it will be in future? It's there right now. In fact, uh, Chris, you want to go to, actually go to boards. Go to boards. I think it'll be on boards. Jack, we added this window to the... Um, Marvelous. To the uh, the website. All yesterday, right. Yesterday, I believe. So all, right. all people need to know is that you go on to the SU website. You go into this field right here, reports and budgets, yeah. and one click... You can see any of them that you want. Okay, good. And you have to know that the budget is inside the annual report to know to click that. If you're well, you know the the but the annual report is two thirds budget numbers, so okay. it'll, you know. Okay. But I I do take the point, and I think this is called uh, things we have realized as we've transitioning to uh, a digital format that we need to make a little bit more transparent. And uh, you'll get no argument from me about the need to do that. Great. So, um, I have another question which may not be relevant to this meeting, but uh, and perhaps I ought to know this already, but do the voters of the three towns vote on this $6 million number collectively? Yes. So the, inter the individual towns, at what point, is it somewhere, does it somewhere in there say how much Westminster is paying and how much Athens is paying? You're all paying the same amount. See, this is the thing, Charlie, this year, this is a single municipality. Uh -huh. This isn't like it was back in the day where there was a Westminster budget, Athens budget, and a Grafton budget, and an Athens Grafton joint contract budget. There's one budget. You are just like there is no such thing as a Westminster and a West North Westminster and a West West budget. It's one budget. But we just pay by the student. We pay. You pay um, off your grand list. A, a real estate tax, or if you're income limited, you pay a capped uh, tax, uh, a ca capped real estate tax. So, but it's all one happy family until the SBE decides that we can be two happy families. Okay, thank you. I have a question, Jeff. Yep. Um, for the health um, budget. Yeah. 
and maintenance of the building and the cleaning. Did you get any COVID from um, grants or reimbursements? Chris, maybe that's your question. The answer is yes, but I'll let Chris touch on this because I will get into the weeds if I do it. And I'd like somebody else to talk. Yeah, we've, we've been working with um, quite a few grants um, through the state. We have the ESSA one grant and we have the ESSA two that we'll be working on shortly. So we have not been shy of grant money to help us with a lot of the stuff we're seeing COVID wise. Um, and I think that's why, while you may see um, like in other districts is that some line items aren't as being used as much as they were in the past because we're trying to use grants for those such as um, cleaning, extra stuff, ordering, you know, equipment in the past that we would have came out of the local budget, for instance, you know, carpet cleaners, um, vacuums, you know, all that stuff there. So yeah, so we, you know, in, in, that, in that token, we have not been shy on um, grant money to help us pay for um, stuff that is directly COVID related and also things that we found out that we needed because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So the, the grant money is, um, we're, we're, we're really tapping the grant monies. Um, Dr. Carey has done a fantastic job with, with the ESSA-1 grants and the ESSA-2 grants that are coming out. Um, ESSA-1 is more or less overall COVID stuff that we, that we need to get, get or we, we haven't gotten. Um, and an ESSA-2 is really focused on what do we need to um, recover you know, student instruction and well-being and everything. So yeah, Catherine, um, we, we are fortunate that we're really um, doing everything we can to utilize every grant dollar that we get. So it's less that the taxpayer has to pick up. That's not gonna affect the budget now. It's gonna be the next year. Um, you, well, no, I mean, you'll see some of the spending in this year's budget downs because we don't have to um, use some of those line items as much as we would have in the past because some of them do relate to COVID and we'll probably um, see it next year as well. We'll probably see the effect of the grant monies that we're using through the ESSA and the ESSA 2 grants for many years to come. I, I just want to pick up a note and say that, you know, people wonder why we need an assistant superintendent. And when Carrie has more than justified her salary this year, just in terms of the grant hawking she's done, because quite candidly, the additional costs around not only cleaning, but to some extent transportation, though we've got a bit of a budget bump for that. Um, and just generally covering the emergency expenses, we really would have been blown up budget wise had she not found and worked with uh, Chris to, uh, to bring in grants, it's been a major, major rescue for us. To I, I can't, I can't be more emphatic about that. Yeah, yeah, Jack. I would say, um, you know, since her tenure here, um, she's brought in millions. I'm talking of grant money, ten plus millions to the to the SU, and um, we'll be reporting out on all the how we spent the grants and how much um, we've we've brought in um, in our three year tenure here probably um, towards the end of the year when we can actually provide visuals for what that grant money paid for um, with student services and education and everything. So um, yeah, uh, we're really tapping into those grants and we're, we're looking forward to sharing that with the community and the boards in regards to what that looks like for WNASU because it is gonna impact us for many years to come in a positive way in regards to what we can provide students, not just in the classroom, but through the food services program as well. Um, uh, I see David Major's hand up. Hi, uh, Jack. Um, because uh, voters in Grafton and Athens are going to be voting on the same day um, as they vote on this budget, they'll be voting whether or not to approve a withdrawal uh, from Westminster. Yep. I think it would be useful to, uh, and I'm certainly curious, to hear... Um, yours, Chris's, any other board members, I, uh, thoughts about what the uh, budget impact um, is to stay, uh, staying together versus uh, Westminster withdrawing, what the tax implication impact is, and also whether there has been any ability to 
uh, whether the merger has affected quality of education in any either of the schools in any in any way, and whether they a, a uh, withdrawal would or would not impact that, um, as far as any of you can see. Thank you. Let me dodge as much of that as I possibly can. <laughs> the <clears throat> the reason for that is because um, we've really made a point, and we made a poor decision early on that we didn't want to put our thumbs on the scale of the of these communities' decisions because it was these communities' decisions. The What we have had is we had uh, the Westminster Advisory Committee advise their community. We had the uh, Grafton Advisory Commission advise theirs and the Athens advise theirs. And I can report on what they said, but I won't, I'm not gonna characterize it much beyond that. It was generally the finding of those advisory commi committees that one, the dollar amount impact was in the neighborhood of a couple of hundred dollars per equalized pupil. And that's against a $18,000 per equalized pupil cost. So it's a fairly nominal number it seems to work, we think, to the advantage of Westminster by that 35, you know, by that, by that amount uh, is not, it's you know, less than 1%. The, um, there are some accrued uh, debts that probably Westminster may want to pick up for getting their building back and possibly getting their, their bond back as in addition, they're building back, but that'll be a discussion for another day. It's not a lot of money. Um, and the only other real issue here is that small districts are inherently more unstable fiscally than large ones. You know, their, their population, student populations jump up and down significantly more as a percentage. The shock absorber becomes more and more important uh, for small districts. But it was the recommendation of both Don Capincelli and Hardy Merrill that uh, there was not there was only a nominal effect on the cost to taxpayers in their communities, and that's that's their report. And I'm just sort of summarizing it. Kathy, you sat in on the meeting the other night. Would that be your take as well? Yeah, I think um, Hardy did a great job of figuring out how the numbers were gonna work. And it was almost an insignificant amount of money between the two. Yeah, I'm, I do wanna thank all the various um, chairs of the various um, advisory committees or commissions. They've done a lot of work. Uh, they did a very thoughtful job. If this, if this is approved, they'll get to do more because we're going to divvy out the work between those commissions and our board uh, when we go before the SPE, assuming that that's what happens. Um, but uh, so far, so good. And uh, my hats off to everybody that's been involved and my encouragement for you to continue to do as much of our work as possible. So there you are. Are there any other questions on any other matters that would be of interest to the voters of the district? There's nothing in the chat and you have no hands raised on the participation list. All right, hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn and that can be by any member of the, those in attendance. I see a motion by David Clark. Do I see a second? Oh, I see, I see everybody's hand up. <laughs> For the record, it's Melissa and uh, all in favor, say aye and we say aye and we shall adjourn. Aye. And so, uh, it looks like we have adjournment without, without objection. And so good night and thank you. And again, my thanks to FACT TV and uh, tell your friends to watch what happened tonight. Thank you all. <laughs>